Welcome everybody to Northwest Small Batch Brewing. I am Stephen, and uh, today is Martin Day. Uh, brewing up a Martin. So what is that? And am I even saying it right? Who knows? But um, it is a, a German word for the month of March. Um, it's an old recipe. Um, they made this beer back in the late 1800s before there was refrigeration. And um, so consequently, they would make it in March. Now, I have read that it used to be illegal for them to brew past March because when there's no refrigeration and the temperatures, uh, the beer is just no good. It would, it would spoil, right? Uh, and so whether it was actually illegal or not, I don't know, but they would make it in March so that it would be ready during Oktoberfest, like at the end of September, and they would just lager it, you know, in um, basements or caves or, you know, whatever, cold places they put their beer uh, and so they call it Martzen because that's when they made it. So it's not that it's drank in March, but that's when it's made. And so that's when I'm making this one. Anyway, uh, before I jump into the whole brew day, uh, if you could do me a favor, it would help a lot if you would consider becoming a subscriber and turning on your notification bell. Uh, it's free and all it does is notify you every time I put out a new video and it helps keep me motivated to keep putting out new content. So let's jump into it. Let's get into the grain bill real quick here. So to start with, uh, I've got three and a half pounds of Munich malt, uh, around six Love of Uh We're looking at 3.42 pounds uh, of Pilsner, German Pilsner, 1.6 Love of uh, 2.34 pounds of Avant-Garde Pale Two Row, Two Love of 1.17 pounds of German Vienna, three and a half lower bonds. 1.28 pounds of Crystal 60, or Caramel 60, which is obviously 60 level one. And uh, I also added about 5% uh, of the grain bill in Carapils, which is a dextrin malt to help give it some mouthfeel and uh, head retention. So I added, um, Oh, what did I add? Something like um, less than a pound, so like 9.3 ounces of carapils, a couple of handfuls of rice holes, and good to go. So let's jump into this real quickly, rapid fire. To start with, we have our strike water all set. And mashing in at 153 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. Pre-boil uh, gravity reading after the one hour mash comes out to be 1051. Now I expected 1075, but I have a half gallon more water than I anticipated, so that will make a difference. Plus, if you don't stir it up really well, you can get a bad reading, uh, the temperature of it. So I don't always go with these, but it's good to check from time to time. All right, your uh, boil. So the first edition, the 60 minute edition, one ounce of Hallerto 5 alpha acid going in. And we're now at the 10 minute mark. So I'm gonna add uh, the 10 minute edition, which is three quarters of an ounce of Liberty hops. That's four alpha acid. And I'm gonna throw in half a Werflick tablet and uh, a little bit of yeast nutrient uh, in as well at this point. So the boil is done, uh, it's time to cool down the wort. I am going to go ahead and wrap it up, seal it, and set it aside to cool naturally on its own until it is down to room temperature. And then I will transfer it to my uh, fermentation chamber before I pitch my yeast so I can get the yeast down, or I'm sorry, the temperature down to yeast pitching temperature. Before that can happen, you aerate your wort and uh, transfer it to your fermenter. Cool it down to pitching temperature, which in this case is 58 degrees, and pitch your yeast. Today's yeast is brought to you by Safe Lager S23, a German lager yeast. And now, now we wait. One eternity later. What 
we're here. You made it. Actually, I should say I made it. Uh, it has been a day. I'm sure you've had those days. I consider it a triumph if I can film myself pouring the beer and then disconnect everything, bring it over here to the table, reconnect all my camera and everything, and start recording and still have any head retention left on the beer. That, my friends, that's a triumph. Uh, also, my CO2 tank kicked at some point. I don't know if it was today or earlier in the week, but uh, that means I don't know if this is carbonated. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't see any carbonation in it. So, this may be a flat Martzen. We'll see. Here, let me give it a smell. Super clean. Like, I don't smell any off flavors, which is always a nice thing. Let's see how it tastes. A little flat. A little flat. Uh, it's going to need a few more days to carbonate. Uh, there's a little bit of carbonation, but that might be the natural carbonation just from the, you know, initial fermentation. Uh, I don't know. There was CO2 when I first turned it on, so at some point uh, it turned off. But you know what? Um, it's going to be really great once the carbonation's in there, but man, I taste a really nice, like, mellow caramel taste in there. Wow. That's really good. It's it's smooth. Um, you know, it's got a nice sort of uh, finish. Like the, there's a caramel on the finish of it, and uh, even with the with the uh, slightly undercarbonated <laughs> problem I have, it's actually still totally drinkable and really good. So. I would definitely recommend this recipe if you're looking to make a Martzen. Um, it's getting to be that time. Um, I think I went over the, the reasons in the original recipe as to why I made a Martzen or how, reasons for making it, so I won't go over that again. But uh, yeah, if you're looking for a recipe or something to look at for Martzen, take a look at this because actually uh, I'd say spot on. So. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me while I made this beer. I'll be back next week with another video, probably about a month for the next actual beer video, like brewing video. And uh, until then, keep on brewing. Cheers.